Hi, everybody. I am Holly Celliano, and I have today John Dowling on my show. Welcome, John. Thanks for having me, Holly. It's always an honor. It's it's a pleasure having you on. So usually you are interviewing me. Today I'm flipping the script on you, going right. to interview you. And I know you have a bunch of screens that you want to share, and I will turn the floor over to you and let you get started with what you want to share with the audience. Okay. Well, thanks, Holly, for having me. It's a <clears throat> privilege and honor always to have you on our show and now vice versa. Uh, you know, you do a really nice job of on our show and others uh, giving really good, uh, solid factual information, which we always appreciate. So thank you for being a a, a, a positive contributor to the community as, in respect to that. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is, uh, with your permission, share my screen and see if I can find it here. Just bear with me a moment. Uh, this is always fun. This takes a second here to get it to there. Let me know when you can see the uh, I see it. The full screen. Okay. Just takes a moment here. So today I'm going to be doing a very brief presentation. It's the kind that I've done, as you've seen with Nick before in the past. I want to bring that to you and your audience, and I pray that it blesses <clears throat> the majority of everyone that watches it as much as possible. And so we're going to be talking about um, the status of the wealth transfer, or the second round of the status of the wealth transfer as it relates to the currencies and other things. Obviously, I think most people know that. It's important to denote, Holly, before we go forward, that the first round has already begun. Stocks and certain cryptos like Bitcoin, and regardless of how you feel about it, uh, have already gone. So this is now the next you know, iteration with specifically the dinar and the corresponding currencies thereof. And as I say in my title here, only God knows the timing. That's why you, neither you and I do dates or rates for that precise reason. It's his blessing and his alone. People need to just do their best to just take a deep breath, relax, and trust him in the process because he's never late and he's never early. He's always right on time. So love here's that. the check. Sorry, go ahead. I said I love that. And that is so true. Right. I didn't want to interrupt. I'm sorry. Um, so here's the topics we're going to be discussing to give sort of a structure to things. So we're going to be talking about Iraq, Zimbabwe, silver, precious metal commodity prices rising. I just did a show a couple of days ago with Greg Manorino where we talked about that. And he and I, every month, every so often, six weeks, are going to be delving into each portion of the wealth transfer. Because as you know, it's so vast and wide and deep, you can't cover it in one setting. Um, <clears throat> we're also going to be talking about WorldCoin and the implications of that coin as it relates to a very specific agenda that we all know about uh, in terms of the CBDCs. Uh, the BRICS nations and how they're continuing to, <clears throat> excuse me, grow and amalgamate. Uh, the current status of China, Taiwan, because we know that's coming and we want to keep a close eye on that because that really relates heavily to Vietnam with respect to the Dong currency. Uh, the continuation of closures, layoffs, and mass exits of CEOs uh, and influential world leaders and corporations and throughout the whole of society. Basically, the paralleling of the old to the new shifting. And we we got we put something on my Telegram that one of my uh, members Zach I always give credit to source like if you come up with something Holly you know I put it on my Telegram many times before so we don't take credit for something that's not ours we have a very vast team that helps put this together of amazing men and women who are very humble bond servants and Zach is one of of many great people here who put out a very big com a couple of weeks ago we're going to highlight that and then final comments and your thoughts and contributions accordingly. Okay, so <clears throat> starting with Iraq, um, we're going to talk about where they are at present. As you can see in this article, it came out about a day or so ago. Uh, Central There's, Bank says, sorry. Excuse me, can't see any, I don't know if the screen's moving. Did you go to an article? I went to the article, yeah. It's, was, not, on, it's not showing up on the screen. I see it on my end. Not on um, mine. It still just has the March um, check-in with Holly. Let me try. Let me try to stop and start again, see if that helps. How's that? Is that better? Okay, now it's up. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know. Technology is a funny thing. Yes. Um, I used to panic so much when I did these, and then I started to learn to just <laughs> trust the process a little bit. Okay, just give it a second. Um, okay, so you should see it now. Yes. Um, okay, so... Iraq Central Bank says that regulated dollar transactions are rising. So what's going on, I'm going to try to make this simple and succinct. 
And I don't want to argue with people about it. I'm just trying to present the best information. People can draw their own conclusions, but here's the deal. There's a lot of talk about uh, the dollar index here in America and also as it relates to Iraq. Uh, Sudani and his crew are making a very concerted effort to reduce the dollar circulation because that's what the corrupt Iranian proxies like Maliki, Halabasi, and the rest of them have been living off of, as you know, for far too long. So you're seeing a delineation of slow bleed of the dollar out as they transition the dinar in. What's been happening is a lot of the Iraqi citizens or residents have been hesitant or resident to open bank accounts because they have a healthy distrust of the banks, and rightfully so. What they're looking for is to see the dinar increase in purchasing power. And I'm not talking from you know 1380 to 1350. I mean a wholesale change against the dollar, and that's what's coming. And so you're seeing all these, these events amalgamate. What we have now is we're in Ramadan and we're getting close to the end. The 9th of April is, as you know, Eid al-Fatar, which is typically the end of the Ramadan cycle. So April 10th officially uh, between our calendar and theirs would begin the end of that back to business as usual, which is interesting because Sudani is officially going, as you know, April 15th to come to the US. What we're watching for, and I put this on my telegram this morning, is whether Erdogan from Turkey comes before or after April 15th to sign the oil and gas law. In this case, believe it or not, it doesn't matter because whether he does it before Sudani goes to US or after, it's still gonna get put in the mix and, and get done because once Sudani gets the US's tentative or tacit cooperation uh, to allow Iraq to move forward, and Janine, of course, who is the UN Foreign Relations Director, she's the intermediary between the UN and Iraq to kind of be the referee. Yeah, she's corrupt, we know all that, but she's still the intermediary. She leaves sometime in, I think now it's mid-May to June. So she wants to get paid on this because this is part of her legacy. She's made that very clear in her statements, both publicly and privately. So she's gonna more than oblige to turn on the purchasing power from the UN standpoint. But what we have to be watching is once Sudani comes back from the US, what happens with Maliki? Because we know there's going to be a showdown, a Mexican standoff, because Maliki does not want to let go of control, doesn't want to let go of the Iranian proxy control, much like we have here in the U.S. with the deep state versus the good guys. It's very much a parallel situation. So that's what this is pointing to. But, but some people believe there's going to be a re-denom re-denomination in country for Iraq, where they take the three zeros off and it'll be 76 cents in country over there. And then whatever the rate would be on the Forex would be, it's important people understand, whatever the rate is, and we don't do dates and rates because we don't know, the starting rate is just that, right, Holly? It's a starting rate. Now, you can help me on this because you were in this world. You were a real estate agent, correct, for a while? Yes. So in your world, is it fair to say the idea was to buy the worst house on the best block, renovate it, fix it up, and make it the best house in the block, and then lowball it to bring in offers, correct? Yep. That's exactly what we believe is going to happen here with Iraq. They're going to come out at a very underrated rate, whatever it is. And then the market, us and the rest of the countries that have copious amounts of the dinar will you know, move it up on an asset-backed digital platform. So our personal belief is not to be concerned about what the starting rate is or whether it's a re-denomination or not. Because again, the re-denomination is for in-country in Iraq has no bearing on what is done internationally uh, from a Forex perspective. People don't have to go nuts. They just need to be patient and let this process play itself out. God will cover us, but we have to do our part and, and be patient and think logically, not emotionally, as hard as that admittedly is to do. Okay, so now we go to the next slide with respect to Zimbabwe. And so a lot of things are happening right now. No, didn't go. Hmm, it's doing it again to you? Yeah. All right, how's that? Is that better? Um... Okay, now it's up. Okay, I may have to stay in this partial screen and not get a full screen just to make sure that we're not interrupted. So my apologies for that. Um, anyway, so we're in a situation where you may already know this. I'm just talking to the whole of the viewers who may not know completely, which is to say that Zimbabwe did something very important. And, and people, you can look at these articles. You don't have to take our word for it. That's why we put it here. Go back to the presentation and just click on the links and you can read and digest at your own pace and leisure. So I'm gonna put that out there, okay? Watch as many times as you need until it sinks in. Um, Zimbabwe just did something very important. They launched up several Starlink satellites 
over in Zimbabwe. We have to ask ourselves, why did they do that? Because they have an upcoming election in August. Nelson Chamisa is the rightful president over there, who is a Christian, who has vowed to do three seminal things, Holly. First order of business, he said in articles that we put on Telegram in the past, get rid of the corruption for the people, restore their sovereignty, their freedom, and return all monies, all monies back to a gold standard. As you know, they recently discovered Scott, Dr. Scott Young on my show a couple of weeks ago, put it out there, props to you, Dr. Scott, that Zimbabwe just recently discovered 13 trillion tons, trillion tons of diamonds. If you don't think they have more gold, you're kidding yourself. They absolutely do. And so that's a big tell what's going on. So you can see here in the article, they're letting the current currency free fall while it weighs gold standard. They're going back to the gold standard. They're just dripping the narrative out. You can see here on my pointer, they're launching several more Starlink satellites. And if you look on the specific bond, it says right here, I promise to pay to the bearer of note on demand. What does that mean? Possession is nine tenths of the law. If you're holding it, you own it. The bank doesn't own it. Some humanitarian fund doesn't own it. You own it. It's important that people, and I'm sure everybody on your channel is doing this, takes action to effectuate their own personal household, their own personal household and their own familial situation to effectuate the change. Uh, so this is just giving people some comfort that we can see these things and process. And as you can see here, we gave Dr. Scott proper credit where credit is due. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Just want to go too fast for the for the viewers. So silver news, some interesting things here have happened. Um, we reported yesterday on our channel, thanks to Jasara News for the for the credit for this article. Once again, he does a lot of great work. Um, King World News reported Michael Oliver, who is the founder of NSA Research, he has correctly predicted uh, market uh, prices and, and bull and bear cycles in the past. What was interesting, Holly, for me is apparently um, the silver mark has eclipsed $26 at least five times in the most recent cycle. Um, so he's now saying instead, we had been reporting $30 was kind of the, the quota or the threshold. He's now coming out and saying $40, then next 50, and then it will just go up from there. We firmly believe it will be in the hundreds of dollars range before the end of this year, because it's going to go parallel with gold. And we know gold is <clears throat> going to go well above 2,500. I haven't checked it today, but uh, it already eclipsed 2,200, as you know, last week. So these things are going to start to run. And what the reason is the banks are not going to be able to paper down the commodities market. So for what that means, for those who don't know, if you have gold or silver certificates, you're holding the paper, but you're not holding the physical asset. The banks or institutions you did that transaction with are. That's why we recommend people physically touch it because you don't touch it, you don't own it, right? So we're not financial advisors. This isn't financial advice. We're just giving you as much solid information as we can to help you draw your own conclusions accordingly. But this is a big mark for silver. And I think most people would agree silver is the, the main driver because it's in manufacturing, right? So <clears throat> virtually everything that we hold, are the computers we're on right now, the watches you've got, the chips in your car, the silver, the colloidal silver you might consume for those of you who are holistic in nature, that's all silver-based. So <clears throat> there isn't a run on, on gold because there's plenty of gold. It's just been covered up, but there is a run on silver. So that's why we say on our show that be looking laterally down from silver, copper, platinum, palladium, start diversifying. Even Greg has rightly touched on that. Um, Iraq, for those who don't know, have the most phosphorus in the world, but they also have rhodium. You know who else has rhodium? Zimbabwe. So these things all complement each other quite nicely. Okay, going forward, we talked about this gold and silver prices rising. If you look at a silver at a $50 price chart for those who are you know, very savvy in that world, you can see a what they call a secular bullish reversal because we basically the bottom line is we're we're paralleling economies right parallel presidents parallel economies as Kim Clement said so we're shifting from the swift demonic cabal system of the central bank to a people's economy on an asset backed system BRICS is dictating that they want as Bill Holter said something real for something real everybody wants that right everybody wants nobody wants to get swindled and so <clears throat> this is the best way to do it. God's money tested over thousands of years. Gee, who knew? <laughs> so, you know, you're just going to see a continuation of the gold and silver and other markets 
continuing to just move in a very consistent and smooth upward upward direction. Okay, so we're talking about WorldCoin. So WorldCoin, uh, Sam Altman's WorldCoin has been suspended by Portugal over what they call data privacy fears. Really what this ties down to is the CBDCs because that ties to the new world order. So you're seeing the, the, the bad guys being forced to play their hand publicly little by little to expose what their agenda is. I don't know if you saw this, Holly, but Australia has been really pushing forward now CBDCs and the uh, digital passports because they don't have, like we do in America, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. They, uh, they are unprotected like we are. So literally as America goes, the rest of the world goes. But <clears throat> this to me was a pretty important point, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that uh, it's encouraging to see Spain, for example, stepping up and standing up and saying no, as no coincidence, Spain is the farmers are standing up to the tyranny uh, that the deep state is trying to pull along with Ireland and England and several other countries around the world. So it's just nice to see um, that you know countries are making a wholesale stand, not just geopolitically, but economically as well. Okay, so we talked about the BRICS nations. <clears throat> I think everybody's pretty familiar with that. There's about 40 nations waiting up on deck to get on board. Um, obviously, we know Nigeria has every in intention of joining. What's Nigeria close to in proximity? Zimbabwe, right? Saudi Arabia obviously has coupled themselves in the process. That's understood. Uh, but what I thought was interesting are two things. Iraq, uh, we're still waiting for their announcement to be ascended into the WTO. That should be forthcoming here in the not too distant future. <clears throat> and then of course, BRICS. Putin has asked Iraq to join BRICS under the proviso that they have already reinstated their currency. So we probably won't see them join BRICS until after they've come back on the international stage. And that's very much on purpose, obviously, based on what I was just saying. Um, I interviewed with Greg Manorino a couple of days ago. I asked him this question about Japan, because as you know, Japan is dumping their treasury yield market. They're in a lot of trouble over there. People can research that. Um, but but uh, they're going to have to make a move here. And China has a lot of leverage on many countries to include Japan, right? And I think China has been tasked as obviously a predominantly Asian country to deal with other predominantly Asian countries, such as Japan, for example, uh, to bring them in to the family of BRICS. So I asked Greg if he thought they were going to join BRICS and what that would mean. His espousal is that it's not going to happen anytime soon, but he also said, who knows, things could change. I, this is just my personal opinion. I think they are going to join the BRICS sooner and later because, like I said, they're they're hemorrhaging badly and they're they're dumping a lot of our treasury bills, and so they're getting rid of the dollar. And a lot of countries, obviously, are ditching the dollar, so that's going to bring a lot of these dollars back to the U.S. state side, which at some point here is going to create hyperinflation. And just like in the 1970s, it was a bit before my time and your time, but we can study in the annals annals of history that uh, when Nixon and um, Kissinger ultimately took us off the, the gold standard and put us on the petrodollar. Uh, for a temporary time, it was a nice drug. It hyperinflated the prices of homes and everything else. But then just like a sugar high, when you come down, the the descent is, is a very bad drop. And that is going to happen here, but now on a global scale. So that just kind of, you know, in a very succinct way, puts it all together for people to see uh, what we believe is the inevitability of more countries like Japan joining under the family auspices of the BRICS. Okay, so we're talking about China, Taiwan. You now you have here a situation where Kristalana Georgieva, who is the current IMF managing director, she took over, I think about two years ago for Christine Lagarde, who's now the head of the European Central Bank, which to me was always like joining, going from the frying pan to the fire. You know, it's it's birds of the same feather. They're all, they're all in cahoots together. Um, but uh, global business leaders are watching that China will continue to be obviously a key contributor to economic growth because of the vast amount of population and the gold reserves that they have, right? But we're watching here, as you can see, insider paper uh, pointed out that Taiwan admits U.S. troops are now stationed on the islands of the coast of China amid concerns or fears that the region will spark World War III. Um, but what we believe is that that is going to be a very short-lived event. And the idea of it really, at the root of it, is for, because people have to remember, China has two sides to it. They have the CCP, they have the Republic, right? And this particular Chi is working on the Republic side to help as part of BRICS 
to free up Vietnam enough, not maybe 100%, but get enough out of communism to free up and power up the Vietnamese dong in silver, in Litecoin, in oil, and many other precious metals. You go back to Iraq, part of the de-dollarization is also to force Iraq not to just live on dependency of oil, because they've been able to do that all these years. Now they're being forced to show their true assets, right? People have to understand that the economy we've been seeing with respect to Iraq and Vietnam is not their true rate. It's a program rate. It's a suppressed, controlled cabal rate. It's not their true value, right? And people may not, I mean, some people now realize it, but a lot of people as a whole in society don't realize that what they're seeing is not what's really the case. And so Iraq is now going to be forced to kind of diversify their portfolio because we know they have diamonds, they have gold, they have oil, obviously, they've got rhodium, they've got phosphorus, they've got many different things. So too does Vietnam and many other countries, right? So when Trump talked about a level playing field with assets on the ground, this is what he's referring to, that countries are going to be able to power up in their respective uh, resources and commodities. So whatever you produce in the ground in your country is what your currency is ultimately going to be backed by. You know, so you take a country like you know, El Salvador, who's heavily, you know, getting into Bitcoin and nuclear fission, by the way, not a lot of people know that. They paid off their debt to the IMF, and now they're in the black. And so they're going to be able to be free and autonomous. They're allowing outside countries to come, and they went from a 30% tax to a 0% tax to make it very attractive for other countries to do business with them, because they no longer have a control or leverage. Remember, the Bible says that the lender is a slave to the borrower. Now that's no longer the case for them. And that's what's going to continue to cycle throughout the whole of the country as time goes on. But I just encourage people to be watching the China-Taiwan event and what we believe that ultimately means. Uh, you with me so far? Can you still see it, Holly? Everything yep, good? the screen is okay. good. Just check in with you. I don't want it to be a, solely a monologue. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, do you have a lot of good things to say? Uh, so we were seeing a continuation, I'm sure no surprise to people, closures, layoffs, resignations. <clears throat> so, you know, I believe it was Macy's uh, announced like about a week or two ago that they're going to be laying off thousands of workers. They're closing about 450 stores, according, according to X-22, uh, over the next, I believe, two years. Um, that that doesn't seem like a very, it seems like a long time, not a lot of stores, but believe you me, those who have been accustomed to the retail aspect, they're going to feel that. Now, some people might argue, well, that's because people can buy things online, but you know as well as I do, it's speaking to the change of the economic climate. And people still, there, there are a lot of things you can buy online, of course, but there are some things you still, as a whole, prefer to buy in person, like shoes, you know, as a woman, especially shoes and clothes, um, different sizes fit people differently. You need to try certain things on. Taking away the retail aspect while saving on cost and, and making it more convenient to shop online does in some cases, hamstring certain people from having a certain advantageous nature to go and try things out. But what it really speaks to is the death of the old economy. And, you know, I think we're going to see a lot more family-based businesses as we go forward. The mom and pop stores are going to come back in vogue. And that's certainly what I'm praying for, and I'm sure you as well. So you see Macy's is preparing to close off a lot of businesses and, and, and employees. And to those employees, besides People don't need to just think about themselves from a shopping convenience, but it affects the workers as well. It affects their their livelihood, their families. It has a whole, um, you know, domino effect on the economy and the welfare of families throughout society. As you and I were talking about offline, you look at Dollar Tree. I think it was a thousand. Now they're saying six hundred, but they're closing a lot of Dollar Tree and, and uh, Dollar Tree and family dollar stores throughout this year. A lot of people feel a lot of different ways about that. Some people think it's a bad thing. Some people think it's a really good thing. But I'm going to go back to the larger perspective of what it speaks to. Uh, Citigroup, as you can see, uh, they just had 5,000 layoffs. So they're they're starting to clean house. Um, you know, you know, Holly, as well as I do, information cycles out in this movement so quickly now, it's hard to keep track. For example, when we put this presentation, my team and I, um, we did it as early as of about seven o'clock this morning, which was a few hours ago. Obviously, news is going to come out between now and then. So to make it as current as possible, I'll just read this to you. Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Citizens Bank, and Chase, among banks that have filed to shut 18 branches in one week. Wells Fargo is responsible for eight of those. We put that in our telegram. That doesn't sound like a lot, but starts to add up. 
you know, here in California, I have, a, a, as you know, a, a wealth advisory center about a mile down my road. So I'm very blessed for that. So that's a main hub who's also going to be participating as their own admission in the exchange, like you had with your friend in San Francisco that you talked about a few weeks ago. So we see a pattern developing. But you have a lot of other branches in the area that they're trimming the fat and, you know, people get comfortable. They like to go to the same person. And, and I get that. But what that's speaking to is the shrinkage is adding up per city, per region around the country, which, you know, 18 here, 20 there starts to add up into hundreds, potentially thousands of branches, right? And that's speaking to the new digital economic reality. And again, I get this argument all the time. It's bad. It's this. Long term, it is bad. But in the short term, for God's people, it's good in the aspect that we will be able to take advantage of this wealth transfer for a limited time. As Greg has said, Manorino, I have said it, you said it, many others are saying it, become your own central bank so that when that point comes, it won't effectuate you or your family. This is why you take advantage of it while you can. Similarly to when you go to the grocery store and they have BOGO deals, you may not need all that food, but you take advantage of it while you can for the times that you can't get access to it. So you avoid the problem altogether by being proactive. In this respect, it's the same thing. So we're talking about layoffs, uh, Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun stepped down. Um, we're going to have in a couple weeks a uh, a very special guest who we're going to have to disguise their identity because they still work there and they have very good inside information about what's going on in that particular corporation, similar to uh, you know previous whistleblower that we know what what happened to them. So we need to disguise this person, protect them very carefully. But this person is, has confided to me that what they've done is they've brought in a woke CEO. And you know the expression, you go woke, you go broke. So um, we're going to see a lot of that disintegration of the old corrupt guard. And this is just one of many seminal examples of that. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Okay, great. So this is the com that, that we put out, and I'm giving credit to, uh, I know he's going to kill me, but I got to give credit where credit is due, my friend Zach Boyd one of our team members, a very humble guy. He owns a uh, detail auto shop company in West Virginia, family man, Christian, great father, great husband, works his butt off to do the right things every day. And uh, he's a very humble guy. And uh, he comes at me occasionally with things. He gave this to me about a week and a half ago, as you can see, dated March 16th. A uh, Wheel of Fortune, as I don't watch much television anymore, and I'm sure you don't either. And he just had this on the background as white noise while he was cooking dinner, perfectly understandable. But he caught this and he took this picture. So it's not AI generated. And we're going to back it up in a second. As you can see here, they had a puzzle that says, what are you doing? Vanna White here, exchanging currency. So the Patriots are putting out very in-your-face comms for the normies to try to start waking people up. I'm sure most people didn't catch that. But for those of us in this movement, we know exactly what that means. That's a very important tell for what's coming. So when people say when, 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 and all that stuff, don't worry about the dates because you can't control it anyway. But you can look to things like this as a very encouraging sign. And for those who say, well, that's AI generated or made up, nonsense. Zach doesn't do that stuff. Now, you don't know him the way I do, but here's the thing. We took it a step further. Uh, one of our other patriots, Veronica Korn, one of the people I was telling you about that makes really great uh, healing crystals to counteract five G technology that gave them to me several months ago, came to me a couple of days ago and gave me this puzzle piece. She went online to Wheel of Fortune's website and she archived the uh, transcripts of previous shows. And as you can see, it says right here, tonight's Wheel of Fortune puzzle pieces, right here in round three, exchanging currency. So it very much corroborates that this was a legit story that came out. And I'm really thankful to those two people for bringing that to our attention so that we could share it with your audience respectively. Okay, we're pretty much at the end here. So um, basically, we'll get into obviously final thoughts, counter discussion comments. But um, just to cite a verse that has always been really important in my heart, Hebrews 11.1, 1, which simply says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. There's the things that we all see, you know, at this level, and then there's the things that God knows at this level, right? Isaiah 54.11, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So there's so much that we don't see, and we need to, as hard as it is, 
um, not just trust the temporary information that's thrown at us, but trust God for the information that's yet, yet to come, and that he does have our, our best interests at heart. Whether other people do or not, we can take comfort and solace in knowing that. And, you know, Kim Clement was one of the greatest modern day prophets of our time, which is why I always source him. And, you know, he talked about back in, in 2001, there will be a great wealth transfer shaking in the dinar and points through Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Thailand, many other people. And yes, folks, the Venezuelan Boulevard, for those of you who are very ardent in that camp, it's all 209 countries and provinces. Don't be concerned about one. It's all in the mix. They go and they go. We have no control over that, right? But we do know that the dinar will actually be the ribbon cutter, and we'll we'll see what happens from there. But a lot of Kim Clement's prophecies, there will be a great shaking on the earth. We've seen a lot of earthquakes this year. The earth will shake and shake again. It goes on and on and on. But he was one of the most accurate prophets, no matter what some may say. Um, certainly not perfect like all of us, a person, but he got it more right than wrong. So um, that's pretty much what I have. And I'll uh, turn it back over to you. That was an incredible slide presentation. Thank you for that. I know that took a lot of work. And for those that do very well with visual instead of just auditory, they can see it. They see the articles. They see it in print. So you're not just speaking it. You're actually giving them proof. So they, like you said, they can go back. They can click on the links and then they can read it themselves. So thank you for that. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. So, so based on what you presented, I know there's a lot, everybody's big focus right now is with Iraq. The The spotlight is on Iraq with al Sadani being here in DC. And I believe he has another meeting by the 10th of April. And people are obviously focusing on when is Iraq going to post their rate on the Forex? When is that coming out? You and I know we can't predict exactly when, but the writing is on the wall that they are really inches away from, from that happening. For those that are waiting for that, what can you tell them? What, it, what do you see as far as timing when you see that happening? Right. It's a, it's a very slippery slope, right? I mean, I don't predict dates and rates, neither, neither do you. It's events and puzzle pieces like what we just did a minute ago. I would say to people, I'd be watching Israel because Israel is the one that spilled the beans about Iraq's intention to reinstate. That's why they had to start talking about it in parliament more openly than they would normally like. And they were doing that on purpose to agitate. Uh, you know, President Trump said that Israel was going to make a grave mistake. Kim Clement said that. It's not a mistake. It's all scripted and done on purpose, but he's talking in code, right? So I don't know, obviously, like you do, the exact date it's going to happen. Maybe five to 10 people in the military in the world know, and they're not telling for obvious reasons. But I would tell you this, watch after he leaves the US and gets everything signed and Janine from the UN to sign off and turn on the purchasing power. Once he comes back to Iraq, all heck is gonna break loose. Like we talked about in our telegram, you've seen it with Maliki. Um, I think we need to be watching about how Israel responds to that because Iraq has to do two key things besides signing the oil and gas law, Besides signing all the taxes and tariffs and, you know, the project, you know, to, to remove the zeros, return to the national stage and, you know, road and bridge and, you know, all those different things that people talk about. Personally, since you asked me, my, my belief and our team's belief uh, concurrently kind of look at it and say, let's see how Israel reacts because uh, Iraq has to do two key things besides all that. They have to extricate and remove themselves from the U.S. deep state right? Because we know the U.S. is going to say tacitly, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead. And then the minute they go back to the U to Iraq, they're going to stab them in the back because the U.S. hates competition. They just do. And then you have the corrupt Iranian proxies like Maliki and in Parliament to deal with. Sudanis working very hard to get rid of that. You know, it's this is a spiritual warfare battle, Ephesians 6.12. I think we all know that instinctively or biblically we can see it, right? So um, let's see what happens once that happens you know, Iraq is going to have a very hard time by themselves getting rid of these two very difficult, stubborn forces. Uh, but Israel can can make that mistake. And by bombing the secret, secret nuclear power plants of Iran, effectively remove both sides and give Iraq 
the ability to, to finally set their people free. I also would be watching a body. I still believe that he's working behind the scenes. He has great regrets about when he was prime minister, uh, missing out on that opportunity to reinstate Iraq to the international stage. He said he would die for his people and he didn't do that. And he, sometimes people, you know, make promises they want to keep, but they just, for whatever reason, they don't keep it and they, it bothers them. It, some people, it doesn't bother them. Some people it does. They have a tack of conscience and they need a second chance to atone. So I'd be watching to see if a body goes to the U.S. to accompany Sudani. I mean, he may, he may not. I'm just saying, but he's working with the people behind the scenes. And I'm sure he's working with Sudani, whose term is going to be coming up. And if Sudani wants to stay in power, it's just like a lot of other politicians. It's in their best interest to appease the people, right? Right. Uh, we see that with many states here in America, uh, particularly the red states, they're making swift moves. For example, Tennessee, as you know, just banned gay marriage. They're banning pride flags in the schools. They're putting legislation in to try to work to get it passed to remove, uh, you know, weather manipulation and DARPA, which is chemtrails. They're making a concerted effort to do that. Whatever their motivation is, right or wrong, they're doing it. And I think that's a parallel uh, copy that we can see throughout the world. So that's what I would be watching for. Um, let's see what happens between we're coming into the second quarter here soon in April. Let's see what happens between April to June, July. Because don't forget, in June, the Fed starts to uh, cut rates. And that's going to take the economy, you know, at its final, the wheels off the economy into its final descent of the roller coaster of the old system. I don't think those things are coincidental. I, I see patterns in all of them personally. So that's how, I, that's how I'd answer people who say that. Just so people don't freak out when they hear you say June, July, because right. you're going right. to be. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm yeah. I'm not saying it's going to take that long. Right. I'm just saying we need to see what, let's take it a step back. So calm down people. Don't put words in my mouth. I didn't say that. Right. I'm saying April, 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 after April 15th, try to say that fast uh, three times April after April 15th, that's difficult. Um, you're going to see um, a lot of heck break loose in the Middle East, in Iraq. That's when the quote unquote, you know, drama and activity really kicks up is what I'm saying. You know, it, it as soon as Israel makes their move, right, we believe it'll be, according to the prophecy of Kim Clement, not our words, days to weeks, you will see it happen. So if you made it this long, just hang on, you'll make it the rest of the way. Just look at the encouraging steps that are happening and the swift moves. We've never we've never been here before. Um, no. Every time they try to do the oil and gas law in the past, you know, they create some panic and they stop it. But this time, th this is a something where there's just with the BRICS nation's help and other factors, mostly God, there's too many things happening that can't stop it now. There's just too much momentum because now Sudani is doing what a body would not do or could not do. You know what amazes me when I hear Maliki's name? When I first got involved in this, he was the president of Iraq and just such a thorn in the Iraq politics. I still can't believe after all these years of being involved in this, he's still being talked about and still hanging around. He, he just is such a thorn in the side of preventing them from moving forward. It just amazes me. He his name is still mentioned in their political arena. Well, he was but until now. And and thank God that's changing. You're absolutely right, though. He has been a absolute thorn in the side of, of you know, one of those uh, uh you know, when you get a um a sliver and you just can't seem to get it out, you know, it's just like or an impacted wisdom tooth that just hangs around he was an Obama holdover. So that was all done on purpose, right? To, I mean, the U.S. being there, the deep state is not an accident with the military. It's to monitor and control and keep them on a program rate. And if you don't believe that, why has the U.S. dollar been the hegemony of the world or been the monopoly, right? But that's all being broken up now. Um, they're trying to create, the deep state is trying to create wars. They're trying to create panic because they don't have a cover story. It's all out in the open. You know, if you you would not see Australia come out and announce what they're going to do if there was a war. They'd be able to hide behind that. But I agree with you. It's It's been going on way too long. It just needs to come to a very hard end. Yes, absolutely. 
So do you have any final thoughts for the audience that you want to talk about? Um, I know you wanted to talk a little bit about gold and silver um, and then about the um, the thing we're doing with Chris with um, the Patriots platform. So Sure. Well, my final thoughts would be take a step back, do your best to not react from an emotional standpoint, come back when you're from a less emotionally charged place. Admittedly, not easy to do. Take a deep breath. Ask yourself, if you don't have peace about something, where is that coming from? That's not coming from God. That's coming from Satan, right? The enemy comes to kill, seek, and destroy, but God came to bring life abundantly. So where there's peace and calm and certainty, if everybody has an inner knowing when they're hearing something that they know for themselves is true and what is not, or if something disturbs them, don't ignore your intuition. Don't ignore your sound discernment. When you know something's right, chances are it's right for you. If it's not, vice versa. So start with that. Um, do not let other people dissuade you that this is a scam or these trolls and these knuckleheads that try to dissuade you and come in and stir the pot and try to plant seeds of doubt. They go on every channel and do that. Don't let them effectuate your emotions. Don't give other people your power, in other words. That's, I would say, a foundational absolute that needs to happen, firstly. Uh, secondly, as far as gold and silver, I mean, it's just part of a bigger equation. Become your own central bank. Gold and silver and other precious metals, copper, platinum, palladium are the easiest ways to, to do that. If you can't afford whole parts of it, get micro fractions or barter with friends that have it that will help you out. You know, we're going to be going, we are ultimately, Holly, as you know, in the, the, the larger scheme of things, we, the currency is us, our talents and our interconnectivity with each other. So we're going back, I am sure of it, to a bartering based system like my grandparents had in the 40s during the World War II. They, my grandmother grew some, certain things in her garden, her friend or neighbor grew other things, and they just, they didn't think anything of it. They just traded off. It wasn't a big deal. And I think that we need to get back to that. And I think that we will absolutely get back to that. Um, to the viewers who are of a certain, uh, the seasoned citizens, the, of a, the older, greatest generation that's concerned about their current temporary poverty situation, I would say to them, do you have a faith of a mustard seed? Why would you assume that in this new economy, people like you and I and many other great people would not try to help them, right? What well, was one of the first things Kim Coleman said? This will all transfer. It's it, Yeah, it's it's for us, but it's not just for us. It's it, it starts with us, but where does it end, right? Where does the seed fall? It's to help the poor, the lonely, the needy, the hungry, the misfortunate, the, the sad, the desolate, the, the widows, the orphans. There's a lot of work to do there. You don't need a humanitarian project to do that. That could just be from your heart. Or if you have a humanitarian project that keys on that, that's fine. But to that elderly population, don't assume that where we've been is where we're always going to be. It's a mindset change. Do your best to change your mindset. Hang around people that are positive and encouraging. And I could say that really to the whole of your audience and mine as well. Get away from negative, toxic people. Their, their tongue is a destructive fire, as Paul said in James chapter three, right? There's life and death in the power of the tongue, right? What we speak out, you know, we start to bring out and our, it becomes our reality. So we have to choose our words carefully and we have to choose the people we hang around with carefully. So in a basic way, that would be my humble two cents to the people. Um, as far as called Patriot goes, yeah, we, uh, you know, Chris has constructed a very thoughtful channel called Club Patriot. It was formerly the Real World Academy. People might recognize that. Um, we have people there that just want to join the, the uh, chat room, like Discord, um, as, a, as an example, or a Facebook, Facebook chat will be set up. The construct visually will look very similar to that. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, so if you just want to join that channel, connect with other patriots, other believers, other like-minded, positive people, it's a free service to do that. And there's no obligation. If you want to start a business, if you want to talk to business owners who are already established, who have a similar product, let's say your humanitarian project or whatever has a patent or something you've created and you want to partner up with another business owner, that's what the Real World Academy inside of Club Patriot, which is a separate part of the website, separate part, okay, along with developing streams of income. If you want to, you know, work from home and you just want to, uh, you know, have 
you know, money should be working for you. Uh, uh, a guy that I worked for a company, he said, you know, you're doing it right because money never sleeps. When money is working for you and leveraging for you, that's when you're doing it correctly. He was talking about a lot of things, but residual income, streams of income. People want to get out of the current construct they're in and their day job. I don't. I think most everybody can agree with that. And some people like their job. That's fine. I'm talking to people who don't, or who are looking for just to get more of their time back. Instead of making someone else rich, they can empower themselves and their family and so forth. This part component of Club Patriot on the Real World Academy side to generate separate streams of income, connect with other business owners, or maybe advertise one of your uh, products or products and services, whatever that might be. That's a separate component that has a one-time membership, but you and I, Holly, are not connected in that aspect. We will just be there mostly on the communication side to do one-on-one. -on -one. And so there are two very different schools of thought. So we want to make that clear. But Chris constructed this thoughtfully a long time ago, and he's now just refined it under the heading of Club Patriot. And if you want, you can leave that link in the description. Awesome. Thank you for that. Well, I think that concludes today's series. You did a wonderful, very, very um, thought out presentation for everybody. And I thank you for that. I know that did take a lot of work. So thank you. My and pleasure. Andrew. Everybody just hang in there and we will get there. It's one day at a time. Just focus on today. Yeah. We are seeing the, the cracks in society in the world in the currency holders it's starting to crack open so it's not that much longer before the avalanche of abundance starts blowing in so agreed okay thank you thanks holly appreciate the time thank you